and recording. All right. So today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to revisit again uh, the idea of state space because, like I mentioned last lecture, this stuff is a little mathematically involved. So let's do more practice on this. In the sense, week seven, lecture one. So we're basically going to redo uh, the lecture from Friday, but with a different system. Okay. So this is chapter three, modeling in the time domain. So the whole goal is to understand the concepts behind state space. Okay. And we'll talk about what state space is. So let's look at an example. So we're going to look at the dual of the circuit we looked at on Friday. So let me ask you this. So the dual of this is the paddle circuit. There are appropriate initial conditions for the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor. But recall I mean, from Friday, we had a series RLC, correct? So we forced it with a voltage source. What kind of source would you use here? Current source, right? Because you could, there's nothing wrong with using a voltage source. But then you're basically forcing the voltage across these nodes, so there's no interesting dynamics. So we'll use a current source. So this is I of T, U of T, okay, to take care of, and we use U of T, okay, so we can take care of the initial conditions, right, appropriately. So we could do this in the Laplace domain, but basically the question is going to be set up uh, system equations for describing circuit. We're going to do this in the time domain. We've already done this in the last chapter, but then we took the Laplace transform. Uh, we assumed zero initial conditions if we're computing the transfer function. Yes. We're not going to do all that uh, for this circuit. We're going to look at it in state space. So let's look at the system equations. So I of t, the current coming in, well, let's call this IR, IL, IC. So KCL implies IR plus IL plus IC is I of T, U of T. Again, these currents are all functions of time. Okay? Now, this equation doesn't really come describe the system because you have one equation. This is a known, or right? you're forcing some function in. But these are unknown, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write these in terms of the voltage across each element, V. Because, on, again, go back, think about this as the series circuit, which is the dual. In the series circuit, the current through all the elements was the same, yes? This is the parallel circuit, so the voltage across all of them is the same. So we're going to eliminate these unknown currents in terms of voltages. So let's do that. IR, according to the passive end convention, is V over R. Okay, so V of T, if you will. IL is, we will, it as, we will leave it as IL for now, okay? IC is C dV dt, is I of T U of T, and the reason why I leave this as IL is because I can write IL, so what's the relation between, as I'm writing this, I'm thinking about, in my head, what's the IV relationship, so this implies V is L D I L D T. Yes? So I L can be written in terms of V, but it'll be an integral, right? So what you will get is an integral differential equation. You won't really get a differential equation. It's not that integral differential equations are hard to solve, right? It's preferable if you have them all in terms of derivatives or all in terms of integrals. It's just more elegant, right? So that's why I haven't written I L out. Is that clear? I'll get an integral here if I write it in terms of V. Okay, so having said that, I want to only have derivatives. 
So what do I like? How do I fix this? Okay. Like in the sense, I want to get only derivatives. Yes. So what do I do? Now there are two things you can do. So here is a differential equation. Okay. We can't. This differential equation can be solved because I L is an unknown, right? I said you could write I L in terms of V, but that'll be an integral. Yes. I don't want to do that. I just want derivatives. So what can I do? So I said that there are two things we can do. So in other words, I want to eliminate I L, right? Basically, it's not I don't want I want to eliminate I L. I want only a differential equation. Okay, a diff eq, not an integral differential equation. So what do I do? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Excellent. So one suggestion, both suggestions are correct. Uh, so Caitlin said, replace v. Connor said, let's take the derivative. Yes. So let's look at Connor's suggestion first, which is a good suggestion, right? So if you take the derivative. On both sides, okay. You gotta take derivative on both sides, yes. So that's good. You get dv dt, right? And you can take the derivative of this, yes. Don't write this down because we're not we're not actually going to do this. You'll see why. The left hand side is not a problem, okay. What about the right hand side? Yeah, there is a uh, like Chris said there's a problem with this guy, all right? Not only that, I mean, the derivative of the unit step is the Dirac delta function. That's one problem. There's another problem in the sense you can't just. This is a function of time, yes. So you have to apply the product rule here. You really don't know what the derivative of i of t is. It, well, it depends on what i of t is. Okay. So we won't pursue this, but we'll get back to this, right? So this is going to be uh, problematic because. DDT, if you write it mathematically, that's the only way to describe this. It's not impossible, it's just not going to be elegant. U of t is i times du dt. The derivative of the unit step is the Dirac delta, right? So let's see why that is the case. And then u, the unit step, times di dt, and this is currently unknown. Okay, in the sense, it depends on the input, right? It's not very elegant. So what do you mean by the Dirac delta, right? So if I have the unit step as a function of time, basically I'll just mention this. We're not going to cover what the delta function is in this class. There is a problem at zero. Yes, it's discontinuous. The unit step for t less than zero, the function is zero. For t greater than or equal to zero, it goes to one. And you really cannot define a function here as a derivative, right? For in interestingly, there is a definition for this. We're not going to pursue this. It'll be pursued hopefully in your Singleton Systems course. So let's uh, follow Caitlin's suggestion, which is we will eliminate v. Okay. So what we will do is we'll say v is l dil dt. Yes. Because this voltage is across every element. Yes. It's just v. So let's start eliminating it. And this time, unlike Friday, let me be a little bit more careful and hopefully get the units right. So V is L over R DIL DT, okay? What are the units on the right-hand side? What are the units of this? No, what are the units of this? Okay, what are the units of this? Amps, right-hand side is amps, okay? U of T is just unit step, it just turns, sorry? I heard volts, okay, that's why. Okay. So if you said amps, what are the units of this? I mean, are the units of this amps? Yeah. How? No, I'm not asking the units of this. I'm asking the units of this. Or the units of this amps. Looking at this, without looking at this, just blindly looking, just blindly, just plainly looking at this, can you tell me if the units of this are amps? I claim you can. How? L yes, L over R is the time constant. 
units of this is seconds. Sorry? Yeah, this is seconds. This is seconds. They cancel. It's amps. That's good. All right? So let's keep going. So this is IL. Let's just leave it. What about this guy? So I replace with V. What do I get? LC D squared V. Ah. D squared IL over DT squared is I of T, U of T. Yes? Are the units of this amps? It's got to be. Right? It better be. But are they? This is amps per second. The second derivative like doesn't add units or something. You just take the derivative. right? Amps per second. What are the units of LC? Seconds. Okay? Remember LC from 2070? That's good. All right? Dimensionally, it's consistent. Yay. And we got a differential equation. Good stuff, right? Okay, so here is the differential equation. Therefore, we actually solved the, therefore, the system equation is, let me write it like this, L squared D squared IL over DT squared plus L over R DIL DT. Okay, uh, plus L over R D L D T plus I L is I of T U of T. So here's a system equation. You can put like initial conditions. I L of zero minus uh, is zero. I L some alpha. So you need two initial conditions. I L dot of zero minus is some beta. And you can solve this in the time domain, right? Given a uh, I of T, whatever, right? So and in chapter two. We looked at how you take the Laplace transform of this, yes? With transfer function, I give you an output. The input is I of t, right? In this case, the output is IL, for example. Assume zero initial conditions. Then you could do all the uh, hoopla from chapter two, and you're all set, OK? That's one way of looking at this system. That's the frequency domain approach. And it's not, well, if you've taken 2070, it, they kind of, well, they should have talked to you why it's called frequency domain and all that. We'll get back into it. At the, we'll, See why it's called the frequency domain in a couple of weeks towards the end of this course. But that's one approach. Right? That's called classic control theory. Now, there's something else called modern control theory. So modern control theory, which originated, uh, uh, so this is greater than or equal to 1960s. It's all modern control theory. Examines, so here is one, equation one, including initial conditions. In the context of what is called state space, abbreviated SS, or linear algebra, this is what I like, like to call it, with ordinary differential equations. Okay? And it's very useful, not because not because it is useful practically, people looked at it, but it's uh, basically when you talk about aircraft control, uh, spacecraft dynamics, or right, orbital dynamics, control theory for that, you have to use modern control theory because it is a, a multiple input, uh, many input, many uh, multiple input, multiple output system. Okay, that's why. So st state space, so state space, or SS, use abbreviation, it says, uh, gives us the amount of memory in the system, okay, how much memory you have, or it's equivalent to the number of state variables, or the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, so it's equivalent to, that's what we're basically looking at, right? However, the point of these three descriptions is that they're all interrelated, okay? So for example, if you look at memory, in this case, you have two memory sources, right? One is the voltage across the capacitor, the other is the current through the inductor. Or you have two degrees of freedom, yes. Or you have two state variables, okay. So you see a second derivative, 
second order differential equation describing your system. That's all it means. Right? However, you will see there are some patterns here. So let's look at that, what the patterns are. So in other words, we're going to rewrite, now we're going to rewrite 1 in the form x vector dot is ax plus bu, y equals cx plus du. Okay? So this is an example of what is called as a single input, single output system. Single input, single output system. Okay, that's what CISO means. And uh, again, from um, Friday's lecture, let's look at an example. Now, that wasn't recorded. I didn't want to, I mean, I could record it over the weekend, but I decided to redo the entire lecture with a different example because this is, it's, a ma it's mathematically little involved, right? So no point, no problem looking at it again. So hopefully, let's see. Kwanzaa inverted pendulum. So here is an example of what a multiple input, single output system. Okay. So again, let's hit the lights while this is coming up. Pendulum, camera angle's really bad. Here it is. All right. So if you look at this, okay, so you have a cart, and this is a kind of experiment you will do. You could do in 3720, but you actually do this in 4720, right? So basically, it's balancing this pendulum, right? And the way this works is this, this is the cart, all right? There are two encoders. One tells us where the cart is, the position of the cart. The other tells us the angle of the pendulum. So there are two inputs into our system. Is that clear? There's only one output, which is the voltage going into this motor. And so the way this balances is, you can't, I mean, this controller is really good, but it'll slowly move to the right and left. Okay, so you see that um, this is actually the gear connected to the motor. I believe this is the motor gear. I forgot. I haven't done this in a long time. This is the encoder for the cart position. The encoder for the pendulum, okay, is in here. You can actually do this even with an analog circuit, but the way it's traditionally done, the name of the company is Kwanzer. Okay, they're a company based in Canada. They give you a Simulink uh, MATLAB based backend on into which you can program your controller. Okay? But the controller for this is done elegantly using state space. It's not that you can't do this using classic controls. The problem is you need a two degree of freedom controller because it turns out you need to know where the card is. You also need to know where this guy is. Make sense? So far, so far if you look at. Um, uh, position control, for example, of the servo motor, right? You just control the position of the output shaft, yes? With an input voltage. Yeah, so single input, uh, single input, single output. That's not where state space is elegantly used, although there are examples of CISO systems for which state space works really well. We're not going to talk about all that. The whole point of state space, doing state space in this class, is to get you comfortable with math. The problem with state space, well, uh, well, it's not, I don't want to say problem. Um, the thing about state space is unlike classic controls where there's a very intuitive notion of what's going on in terms of frequency, in state space, it's not, it's definitely not as intuitive as classical control. I would not say it is not intuitive, but the behavior of the system is basically given by the eigenvalues of this matrix A. So my claim is, we can rewrite one in this form, and that's what basically in this class we're going to do. So even on your homeworks and stuff, when I give a problem like this, I'll give you like a differential equation. I'll ask you to write it in state space form. That's it. Because that you have to get comfortable with. All right, so let's rewrite this in this form. But before we do that, what I want to look at is what are the, some of the uh, 
what are the different variables in that expression. To do that, I'm just going to copy and paste from your book because it's much easier. Say so modeling in the time domain. So as I told you in Friday's lecture, here is uh, the state space description of the series oral C network. So here it is, okay. From your book, so let me just copy this. So let me do this. So here is 318, 319. And we just look at this, there's a slight difference between this expression and this one in the sense you see how u is bold faced. Yes, y is also bold faced. So these are also vectors in the general case. For us, this is a scalar right here. Okay. I don't have two inputs coming in, unlike my inverted pendulum. And my y is also a scalar. I'm just measuring one thing. Okay? In general, that's not true. All right, so let's look at uh, initial condition for t greater than equal to t0, and for initial conditions x of t, or x of t0, I'm sorry, this is how the system behaves, right? In other words, again, we can rewrite our differential equation in this form, and we're going to do that. But basically, x is our state vector, right? U is the input, A is the system matrix, B is a matrix called the input matrix, C is an output matrix, and D for us is actually going to be a scalar. It's not going to be a matrix, but in general it's a matrix. So in our case, given one, our state variables I'm going to pick as IL and IL dot. Okay, IL as a function of time. I L dot as a function of time. Recall that the dot means derivative with respect to time, right? Again, given one, right? That is, I want to rewrite this differential equation state space. A more natural choice for state variables, given that it's the equivalent to the number of memory elements, a more natural choice for state variables would be the voltage across the capacitor V and the current through the inductor IL, all right? We'll write the state space representation given that charge of state variables next. But for now, let me do this. So in other words, I have to say x vector dot, so this implies, let me do this step by step. Plenty of time. Yes, so the, if this is x, the derivative of this guy is the derivative of the individual elements. So now what I have to do is I have to rewrite this. So from here, I have to rewrite it in this form plus some matrix times u of t, which is i l of t, u of t, okay? So we'll assume actually that u of t, uh, just for clarity, so we don't get confused with this u, this i, uh, this is not i l, what am I writing, this is i. My u of t is with my input here, okay? And then I'm going to write y is something times i l, i l dot, plus something times my input, which is i of t. Now I have to give you a y, so let's define y as The voltage, okay? Just for different, just to be different. I'm going to say, all right, my input is the current here. My output is the voltage across this element. Yes? That's what I want. Right. So, okay. So let me zoom out. Let's start writing this matrix. Let zoom out even more. Hopefully. No, it's zooming in. <laughs> All right. So here is my differential equation down here, and I need to fill these entries in the matrix. 
So let's look at, first of all, the dimensions of this matrix. So what is the dimension of this matrix? Let me turn on the lights. All right, I'm back. So this is two by one. So this is also two by one. This is one by one. Okay, it's a scalar. So what are the dimensions of this matrix? All of you have done basically in algebra, like I asked Friday. Yes, you can multiply matrices. That's what I mean. Yes, that's all you need actually. So this has to be 2 by 2, yes? In other words, I take a single row and I multiply it by a column. So this is 1 by 1. It's a scalar. I have defined it as the voltage across these elements. Uh, and then this is 1 row, 2 columns. This this is 2 by 1, okay? And this is 1 by 1 because this other thing is a scalar, all right? So... Let's look at the first row of this A matrix and the first row of this B matrix. Figure out what it's going to be. So IL dot on the left-hand side must be equal to this IL dot, yes? There is an IL dot here. That means this matrix is simply 0, 1, first row, and this is 0. So if you multiply this out, I take this row and I multiply it with this column. 0 times 1, 0 times IL is 0. 1 times IL dot is IL dot. 0 times i is 0. So il dot equals il dot. That's easy. Okay. Is that clear? All right. So for il double dot, how do you get il double dot? I need to get il double dot, right? So what do we do? So remember, we are rewriting 1 in this form. So have I used 1 yet? No. So I have to use 1 and write IL double dot, yes? Because IL double dot is right here, second derivative. So let me just um, zoom in here and write it in the sense. I don't really need my initial conditions in the sense this, the initial conditions are incorporated in this equation. It's a differential equation, right? That's why it's called modeling in the time domain. This is actually a time domain model, but what this is, is again, uh, rewriting it in this form lets us use linear algebra, right? Because this is the beauty of this method, right? What is the order of this differential, vector differential equation? Huh? It's first order, right? In terms of x vector, it's first order. So x vector of time is e to the at. So here, I'll just only box this. So this is like x dot equals ax, right? So basically the solution to this x vector is e to the at x vector of 0. Okay? x vector as a function of time. Again, only this part, okay? It turns out you can write a general expression for this entire 318 and 319, but the elegance of this method is if you can compute this, what is called as the matrix exponential, you can actually solve this, right? One way to compute this is to use the power series expansion of e to the x. That's why this, this method is like very, very powerful, right? So I, we're not going to do this, but it's very interesting. Right? Okay, let's just um, finish up this matrix. So here's my differential equation. So, this, let me do this. So, note, this implies I want IL double dot, yes? So, IL double dot is negative IL dot. Um, let me do this. So, I move this to the other side. I divide it by LC, yes? So, let's see. What do I get? I divide it by LC.
Yes? Minus IL over LC. Minus I over LC. Oh, 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 plus, plus. And remember, my uh, U of T has been taken care of in here. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. I don't like the units here. So anyway, let me... So what is... What are these entries? Minus 1 over LC. Then what? What about this guy? 1 over LC. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah. Question? Which one? Oh, why do we use this expression for the second row and not the first row? Because the first row on the left hand side, I just have IL dot, right? On the right hand side, I can simply get an IL dot. So that's why. In other words, I, first row is trivial. So the IL dot equals IL dot. But it turns out that if you have an nth order linear differential equation, let's say this is third order, right? Your state variables are going to be what? It's going to be x, x dot, and x double dot, right? So the first two rows, so you're going to get a 3 by 3 matrix. But the first two rows are going to be trivial. That's a very good question which Connor asks. So let's actually, I think it's in your book. So blah, blah. Oh, here's. Oh, what do you know? It's actually, it's actually is an example. It's representing a translational mechanical system. Uh, find state space representation. Uh, see. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So let's say if you have a differential equation like this, yes, your state variables are going to be the function on all its derivatives. Yes, memory. So if you notice, Connor, see. You see the first n minus 1 rows, okay? And in this case, we just have this trivial one. This is actually a very, I forgot the name of this matrix in state space. Okay? It's got a very, oh, I think it's called phase variable form. Oh, here it is, yes. Phase variable form. It's a very, very special kind of matrix. So in phase variable form, you get trivial entries for the first n minus 1 rows. The nth row, you get from the differential equation itself. And you can actually prove this. It's true for any nth order differential equation. As long as it's constant coefficient. Okay. Very, very powerful, this method. All right. So any other questions on this A and B matrix? Okay. What about this matrix? In other words, why is my V? Yes, it's the voltage here. Let me zoom out, actually. We can write it by zooming out. It's time to be here. It's the voltage here. This is my output, okay? How do I get this from my IL, IL dot, and potentially I of T? So it's like a game we have to play. It's a very thinking game. So how do I get this? Yes, which, what do you put, so, so one thing is, correct, there are, this is probably zero, right, it's like, my claim is, it is zero, I can get my voltage from just IL and or IL dot, I can only get this, I can get it from here, either of these or combination of these, I don't need this I, how, how do I get it from IL, IL dot, so in other words, I want this V, hint, it's on this page, right, 
Yes. Zero now. Right here. The voltage here is the same as the voltage across the inductor is L dil dt. Yes. So I just take L and multiply it with IL dot is dil dt. Is that clear? Let me zoom in. So V, which is my output, is L dil dt. Done. Right? Suppose I pick my output as the current through the inductor, this would be one zero zero. Yes. So it'll it'll change depending on what my output is. Of course, this is the thing about state space. This doesn't tell you how to actually measure it. It just tells you, oh yeah, if I want IL, mathematically I just put a one here. Measuring it is a whole different thing. Okay, let's go back to this. Right? This was bothering me, and my subconscious was thinking about it. What is bothering me are the units here. Okay? So, uh, let's see. Let's look at this equation, right? Let's see if these are dimensionally consistent. I, I figured it out well, subconsciously. I was letting you think. So, we're discussing the dimensions of this, right? Dimension analysis is very, very important. So what are the dimensions? I is amps, no question on that, right? This is amp, yes? So what are the units of DIL DT? Amps per second, okay? But going back here, what are the units of D squared IL over DT squared? Amps per second squared, right? Is that clear? Because omega, so note, I'll just write this down. What are the units of LC? The dimensions of LC, this is what is second squared, okay? It's not seconds because, well, there are two ways to think about it. Let's just do this. We have time. Omega is defined as 1 over square root of LC, yes? Omega is radians per second. Oops. Radians is dimensionless, yes? So if it's 1 over square root of LC, this better be second squared per radian, yes? So, well, that will work out, right? So, this is second squared. This is the rate of change of IL. <laughs> it's DDT of DIL DT, right? It's the rate of change of amps per second, or it's amps per second squared. So, second squared cancel. This we already discussed. The units of this is seconds. This cancels, yes? So you get amps, 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 amps. Good, all right? So this that should be the same thing here, yes? Amps per second squared, correct? Amps per second squared. Amps per second multiplied by 1 over second. Amps per second squared, amps per second squared. Is that clear? I just want to be, I just want to re-emphasize this. Okay? Units are very, very important because on Friday, when I screwed it up and I was writing it, so I just didn't at that time think about the units, but we should always have in our uh, minds what the units are, okay? And what I have not done here is I claim that the dimensions of LC can, you can prove this to be second squared using the fact that Q is CV, okay? So in other words, the dimensions of C is what? Coulomb per volt, okay, and then phi is Li, for example, right? Or if you want, you can do, okay, let me do this and show you another way of how to do this. The units of inductance is Weber, oh, mm, 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 phi is Li, Q is CV, the units of C is Coulomb per volt, yeah. it's Weber per amp, no, it has to be consistent, okay? You can use this, or that is, you can go back to first principles. I is C D V D T, uh, V is L D I D T. This is probably easier. This implies the unit of. Well, it's the same thing, right? Oops. Do race. Doing stroke. Right. Uh, Weber is the unit of 
magnetic flux, right? It's the number of it's the number of field lines, magnetic field lines going through a given cross-sectional area. That's why I actually wrote this. Okay. So we don't know what a Weber is. You can still use this. So in other words, so let me finish this. You can see the Coulomb. So let's just just forget about this. So the cool uh, the capacitance is amps per volt per second. Okay. Yes. The units of L is volt per amp per second. Yes. So let's just do this. Therefore, the dimensions of LC is volt per amp per second multiplied by amp per volt per second. Yes. So this is second squared. Yeah, all they all cancel. You get second squared. So if you don't know this, just forget about this. But you should know this. So it is second squared. Okay. This is the actual way you prove it's actually second squared. This one is like, yeah, it's good if you know this. But it's from first principles. And that's it's not really an issue with state space. It's the question of units comes out really. It's very apparent in state space, right? Like when you're doing the DC motor and stuff, the units they kind of like they're like, yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? But especially here in states where you're dividing, you're canceling stuff out, you have to be very careful that you're dimensionally consistent. Right? And if you spot expressions like RC, oh yeah, I've seen this before, LC, I've seen this before, L over R, you've seen this before. If you get something like RL, um, that's a hint that we screwed up, right? Because it's never RL, right? It's L over R. Makes sense? So it's a very strong hint that there is some screw up somewhere. So you got to be mindful, right? So, including me, this called this is an example of mindfulness. All right. So this looks good. So there's one state space representation. So let's get the other one. So how much time do we have? We got five minutes, or six minutes. Whatever. So here's another one. So x vector. Now I want to get the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor. I of t, again the u of t is implied here. I think I put an r here. Here's the voltage. Here's the inductor. Here's the capacitor. I L, these are the important variables. Therefore, I'm just going to write out the state space representation. So x dot is v dot and I L dot is some matrix two by two times V I L plus my input i of t, and let's say my output y is still defined to be the voltage. And usually in state space, this output equation you can just like eyeball it. Right? So V i l, usually it's not true in general. But. Okay, so given y is my voltage here, there is a voltage across this. What is my C and D matrix? Well, D is a scalar. What are, it's a one row, two column. So what are the entries in this matrix? One, zero. And this guy is zero. Okay? That's it. Very simple. Now, how do I get the voltage across this guy? So for that, you have to think about the differential equations. Yes? So what do I do? So I need to write V dot. And this it's actually a lot of fun in the sense it's this is where the your circuit analysis, your and from chapters two, translational mechanical systems, it all comes in, right? Circuit analysis you should know from 2070, but well, let's do it. So I of T is again IR. So let me do this step by step. IR plus I L plus I C. Yes. So what do I need? I IL is good because I have an IL on the right hand side. Yes? I want a V dot and I want a V. I, I have an I. I have an I. Is that clear? So I'm going to try, I'm trying to match, I'm trying to rewrite this KCL so I can get the first, I mean, I can get the entries of this matrix. So let's see, let me leave I in. How do I, can I eliminate IR, the current through this resistor? I want it in terms of V, I, L, I. 
any one of those would do this is the difficulty if you will in state space there's no step by step method given this a uh, physical system how do you get this matrix entry there is no known step by step method you just have to think right or we have to think so how do i what can i do for ir i need to take out ir ir is not here so what do i do ideas huh v o r r peter's way okay that's it that's good okay v is here 1 over r is a constant okay that i can handle in the a matrix is that clear all right il is good let il stay what about ic i need to get rid of ic yeah peter is right c v dot oh beautiful see v dot is on the left hand side yes oh i got it so this equation is going to give me the first row of the a matrix and the first row of the b matrix yes so let's rewrite it being mindful of the signs v dot which is volts per second yes so being mindful of the units as well v dot is what minus v over r c minus i l over c plus i over c yes so this is minus 1 over r c minus 1 over c 1 over One over C. Yes. Okay. Now you got to think, right? In the sense, I have already, or we have already used this equation. We have exhausted it to write this. So you can't use this equation again to get this row. So we need something else. What have I not used here? If you think about it, I've used the current. I've used this element. I have used this element. Yes. I've used KCL. KVL is trivial. It's all in battle. KVL does not help us. So what have I not used? That will. That's what will give me the second row. I've not used something here. Yeah, I have not used the inductor IV relationship. Yes. So what is the inductor IV relationship? So let me write this in a different color. So V is L D I L D T. Yes. Therefore. This one is going to be what? One over L zero zero. Yes. Mm hmm. Exactly. To uh, repeat for the people who are looking at the lecture, uh, Connor's observation excellent. The system is the same. We're repeating the same stuff. We're just looking at it differently. That's exactly what it is. That's why I love doing state space. Well, not only me. Professors, you know, because it it helps you look at a problem in different ways. Is that clear? The matrices are not the same, right? It can't be because they're different state variables. There's no way the same matrix can describe this differential equation and this state variables. But they are related. They come from the same system. Okay. So again, uh, look at the schedule. I have put some more practice sessions of this. So next we'll do a translational mechanical system. And on the exam, I'll just give you like a circuit or a translational mechanical system. I'll just ask you to get the state equations. This involves practice because you have to think about how to do this, right? So practice more; it'll actually reemphasize your circuit analysis skills, all that. And I'll see you next time.